This weekend in Ohio, they mark the anniversary of this spring day at Kent State University in 1970, when National Guard troops opened fire on American students who were protesting against the Vietnam War. The American military is not supposed to fire on American civilians this way, but they did. They killed four students, they injured nine. The students had gathered to express their political position against the Vietnam War. They wanted to be heard in that political debate, even though many of them were not yet old enough to vote. In 1970, the year of the Kent State shootings, the voting age in this country was still 21. So if you were 18, or if you were 19, or if you were 20, you could get drafted into war. You stood a good chance of getting forced into service in the Vietnam War. But even so, at 18, or 19, or 20, you could not vote for or against the politicians who would send you to that war. You were old enough to fight, but not old enough to vote. That situation seemed unfair enough to enough people that the country voted to change that idea. Students marched for the right to vote. They marched and lobbied and pushed and organized to lower the voting age to 18, to the same age at which you could be drafted. And the students got what they wanted. They got a voice in the process in the form of a new amendment to the United States Constitution. President Richard Nixon signed it over the July 4th holiday in 1971. It seems to me that it is particularly appropriate that on this same day, we are certifying the 26th Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. That amendment, as you know, provides for the right to vote of all of our young people between 18 and 21. 11 million new voters as a result of this amendment. 11 million new voters, 11 million new voters who were suddenly eligible both to serve their country in the military and to have a say in how their country was run. That idea was not universally celebrated in this country. In college towns from Lexington, Kentucky to Middlebury, Vermont, they sued to try to stop the local students from voting. They sued in New Jersey and Mississippi and Pennsylvania and Texas. They sued in Michigan. This was not a regional thing. It happened almost everywhere. And almost everywhere, the courts found that if anybody over age 18 could vote and vote where they lived, well, that applied to college students too. College students over the age of 18 have a constitutional right to register and vote from where they are living to go to school. When one of those lawsuits ended up at the California Supreme Court, the court wrote these few lines of emphatic poetry, basically, in, in taking the voting rights side. Quote, America's youth entreated, pleaded for, demanded a voice in the governance of this nation. On campuses by the hundreds, at Lincoln's Monument by the hundreds of thousands, they voiced their frustration at their electoral impotence and their love of a country which they believed to be abandoning its ideals. Many more worked quietly and effectively within a system that gave them scant recognition. And in the land of Vietnam, they lie as proof that death accords youth no protected status. Their struggle for recognition divided a nation against itself. Congress and more than three quarters of the states have now determined in their wisdom that youth shall have a new birth of freedom. The franchise, rights won at the cost of so much individual and social suffering, may not and shall not be curtailed on the basis of hoary fictions that these men and women are children tied to residential apron strings. Dang. In other words, students can vote where they go to college. Settled. But um bum But the holdout of all holdouts, the place where they dug in harder than anywhere else to try to make that not so, uh, was this place, uh, Waller County, Texas. Waller County is not all that far from Houston, but it is a relatively rural county, only about 40,000 people. It also has one university called Prairie View A&M. Prairie View is a historically black university. It was founded after the Civil War on old plantation land. Today, Prairie View has several thousand students. Most but not all of them are African American. The school graduates a lot of engineers, nurses, teachers. Through its ROTC program, it graduates a lot of Army officers. The deputy commander for Desert Storm graduated from Prairie View. Prairie View is also known for its band, the famous Marching Storm. Look how good they are. If you are within reaching distance of Waller County, Texas at homecoming this fall, all the tape I looked at today tells me that you should go. Their band is really, really good. We know from the historical record that Prairie View students, the, one, the ones who were old enough, began trying to register to vote in 1966. That was the year after Congress passed the Voting Rights Act. And we know from the historical record that the local registrar of voters didn't much like the idea started forcing these new would-be voters, people he said he did not know, to take extra steps and jump through extra hoops in order to be registered to vote. When the voting age was then lowered to 18, and more Prairie View students started trying to register to vote, 
That local registrar typed up a questionnaire for the new people, the people he said he did not know and who did not own property in the county. He'd ask them, are you a college student? What do you plan to do when you finish your college education? Do you belong to a church, club, or some Waller County organization other than college-related? If you went to Prairie View and you wanted to vote there, you went to this one registrar and you answered the questions and you waited for his answer. The caption on this old clipping says that this is the registrar, Leroy Sim, coming to give students his questionnaire to, quote, determine whether they meet requirements for voting. That determination, according to Leroy Sim, was almost always no. And so the students at historically black Prairie View A&M in Waller County, Texas, did not get to vote at their school in the 1972 presidential elections, like the rest of the students in America did. Over the next few years, a court would tell Leroy Sim to let the students vote. Election officials in Texas made several trips to Prairie View trying to help the students vote. The Texas legislature passed a law telling that registrar to let the students there vote. But Leroy Sim in Waller County, Texas would not budge. Not for those people he didn't consider part of his community who he didn't think ought to be allowed to vote there. Well, in the next big national election in 1976, this particular Prairie View A&M student, a man named Sidney Hicks, he took part in a voter registration drive. This is him holding the county's questionnaire. Court papers show that the Prairie View students sent in several hundred applications to vote, maybe more than a thousand. At most, three dozen got through. That same year, Sidney Hicks ran for city council in Prairie View, and he won, but he was still not allowed to vote in the town. When we spoke with Mr. Hicks today, he told us this. He said, all we wanted was a part of the American dream, that all citizens have the right to vote. The year Sidney Hicks could not vote there, the federal government sued on behalf of the students at Prairie View. Leroy Sim fought them in court after court until finally, in 1979, in January 1979, the United States Supreme Court issued a one-sentence ruling for the Prairie View students. The Supreme Court said unequivocally that students have the right to vote at their college. Whether that college is historically black Prairie View A&M or Harvard or anywhere else. The Supreme Court settled that question overtly and succinctly. The right of students to vote where they go to college is an overtly, uncomplicatedly settled matter of law in this country. But something has happened in the last couple of years in which elected Republicans around the country, again, not regionally specific, but around the country, Republicans in the last couple of years have decided that they just cannot abide this piece of settled law. Forget the Supreme Court. They are back to desperate on this issue. And if you want to know why, every few days now, you're hearing about more people being arrested doing civil disobedience in North Carolina. Dozens more people arrested just today. If you want to know part of the reason why, it's because what it's happening to voting rights in North Carolina, along with a lot of other things going on in North Carolina. One of the Republican bills that's up in that state right now would try to make students stop being able to vote where they go to college by raising taxes. It would raise your parents' taxes, punish your parents with a tax hike if you as a student registered to vote at your college. But it's not, not just in North Carolina. The chairman of the Republican Party in Maine threatened several hundred college students for trying to vote back in 2011. In 2012, in New Hampshire, Republicans tried to block students from voting there. After the election, a Republican in Indiana proposed banning any student from voting if they paid out-of-state tuition. She did eventually give that up after the college Republicans pointed out that her bill would violate students' constitutional rights. Now in Ohio, Republicans there have proposed punishing universities for helping students vote. They would block schools from charging student voters out-of-state tuition. Ohio's public colleges say this would cost the schools hundreds of millions of dollars every year. That bill passed the Ohio House, and it is on to the Republicans in the Senate. There is an underappreciated radicalism that's at work here, and, and also a willingness to refight very much settled fights. This is a settled matter, but Republicans right now are relitigating it anyway, pushing laws that are straight out of 1970s Waller County, Texas. But it is no mystery why Republicans are so desperate to go there, even though this ought to be a settled matter. These are the results by precinct from Ohio State last year. It was a sweep for Barack Obama in a big way. It was also a sweep for Barack Obama last year at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Look at those margins. Nearly a sweep at the University of Indiana. Students tend to vote Democratic, and everybody knows it. Yet we have still this stubborn idea in our country that voting itself is a good thing without regard for how you vote. You could hear that yesterday in the remarks that President Obama made at Ohio State's graduation when he quoted, of all people, President Bush. 
I'm not going to get partisan either because that's not what citizenship is about. In fact, I'm asking the same thing of you that President Bush did when he spoke at this commencement in 2002. America needs more than taxpayers, spectators, and occasional voters, he said. America needs full-time citizens. America needs full-time citizens. We used to have a national consensus on that. I am not convinced that we still do.